Hi everybody, my name is Zartur and welcome to another Pixelpad tutorial. We are creating our Clash Royale light game. And in the last video, we added the enemy AI, right? The enemy is being spawned every three seconds for us. Well, the first spawn after, after one second when I press play, and then the other ones come after every three seconds, right? So I want to change this a little bit. I don't want all the enemies to come exactly after three seconds, because that's kind of predictable, right? So I want to add some randomness. So let's go to the game on the loop tab. And here, if I want to use random on this place here, I have to say in part random at the top, right? And what do I want to use as random? So I want my timer to be random. I don't want it always to be three seconds. So instead of always being three seconds, it will always be random dot uniform. So a random number between. So I want it to spawn every, let's say from one second to five seconds. So 60 to 300. And if you're asking yourself, how do you get this value? Well, just multiply 60 by the number of seconds you want. So if it's five seconds, 60 times five, that's 300, right? So here it will be a random number between 60 and 300. But if you remember, this random function here can give me uh, float numbers, right? So it can give me, let's say 85.9 or 200.26, right? And you might think that won't impact in our game, but actually it will. So let's think a little bit on this. So let's say we have 85.9. Let's say it gives us 85.9 to be the next bad timer, right? And then the bad timer keeps going down in one. So that means that it will go 85 and then 84, 83, 82, 81, and it will keep going until at some point it will be 2.9, 0 1.9, right? 0 0.9 is not zero yet. So it will not run this code, but then on the next loop, it won't be zero. It will be minus 0 0.1. And this is also not zero. So this already skipped the timer and will keep going down because it, it won't read this code. So it won't reset the timer. So it will keep going down. So minus one, minus two, and will go down forever. So to prevent that from happening, we could either transform this to integer number like we've done before, or what I will do is I will change the condition. I don't want to see if my bad timer is equals equals zero, if it is exactly the same as zero. I want to check if it is smaller or equals than zero. So I use the smaller and the equals to have two conditions here. So let's say if it is zero, then it should trigger this because I'm checking if it's smaller or equal than zero. If it is 0 0.2, it won't trigger because 0 0.2 is greater than 0. 1 is also greater than 0, but minus 0 0.1 is already smaller than 0, right? So this will would also trigger this uh, condition. So that solves our problem already. We don't have to transform this into an integer value. We just have to change a little bit the condition. And this is better, actually, because checking for exact value might bug your game sometimes. So let's just cover some possible failures, right? So now, as you can see, it's not constant anymore. It is pretty random. You never know when the next enemy is gonna come. If it is in one second, in two seconds, in five seconds, it can be very fast, it can be very slow, right? So our game is way more random. And that's pretty good. So the next thing I want to do is to make the units to fight each other. They're not fighting each other yet. They cannot uh, destroy each other yet but that's what we're gonna do now. So to start doing the combat, we need to go inside the unit and the enemy unit, and both of them needs uh, life points, right? They need to have a life. So here on my unit, I have speed, I have attack damage, and I will also have self.life. And my life will also be equals 100, and I'll do the same for my enemy unit, my enemy unit will also have self.life that is equals 100. So both my unit and my enemy unit has life that is equals 100. 
and how can I make them battle now? So the way we are going to make them battle is if they are colliding with each other, then they should uh, deal damage to each other. And that's pretty easy to do. So here on my unit class, I'll go to the loop tab. And after all this code here, I'll go back to the beginning of the, the code file here. And I'll say that if I get a collision, so get collision, let me give some more space in here just so we can see this thing better. So if I get a collision between myself, that is the unit, and any object from the class enemy unit, then I want to apply the damage, right? Because I'm colliding with an enemy unit. So what I want to do is I want to get the exact unit that I'm colliding with. So I can do that by saying that the enemy is equals to get collision between myself and the enemy unit. Oh, enemy unit. And after I get the exact enemy that is colliding with me, I want to take life from it. So I can say that enemy dot life will be equals. So here I'm, I'm doing the same thing as I did with the castle's life, right? Whenever my unit's colliding with the castle, but this is for the enemy. So whenever my unit's colliding with the enemy, it will take life from the enemy. So enemy dot life is going to be enemy dot life minus self dot attack damage. So I'll take life from the enemy according to my attack damage. And a different thing here is that we're not going to destroy our unit if they if they collide with the enemy unit, but instead we're just going to destroy our unit if the life gets to zero, right? Or is smaller than zero because it can also be smaller than zero. And then like if we get, let's say if we have two life and we, we receive 10 damage, then my life would be minus eight, right? So if, it, if my life is smaller than zero, I should also get destroyed. So after this if here, I will create another if, not inside this if, and this if here is the death condition. So I'm saying here, if self.life, so if my own life is smaller or equal than zero, then what I want to do is I want to destroy myself. And that's all. So my unit can do damage to the enemy. And if my unit's health or my unit's life is smaller than zero, then it destroys itself. I'll do the same thing on my enemy unit. So I will copy all these lines of code that I've just typed. Control C. I'll go to my enemy unit in the loop tab. After this code here, I will press Control V to paste the code there. And here I'm checking collisions now between myself and the unit because I am the enemy unit. And then the unit will be the collision between myself and the unit. So I'm getting the exact unit who has collided with me and storing it inside the unit. And the unit's life is going to be the unit's life minus my own attack damage. And whenever my life is smaller or equal than zero, I destroy myself as well. So this is the same for both units. All right. So now let's see what happens because they are both dealing damage to each other already. And if their lives are zero or smaller than zero, they get destroyed, right? So let's see if that works. I'm going to create some units here. Expect to some go to the same place. I don't think they gave damage enough to each other. Let's see, I'm going to create a lot here. Oh, there. Did you see that one got disappeared? The one disappeared. Okay, some of them are not colliding to each other, but that's because of when those units will turn to the enemy castle. So you can see that here, right after it leaves the bridge, it already turns to the enemy castle, and then it goes in a different angle from where the, the bat comes. So we can solve that problem from the units not colliding to each other by making my units and the enemy units as well walk a little bit more after the bridge before turning to the castle. So to do that, I'm going to go inside my... Uh, we are already inside enemy unit, so we're going to fix this one first. So inside enemy unit, instead of walking 150 
here, I will add 50 more, so 200. So let's see if now my uh, bat can collide with my, my units. Let's see there. Okay, that's a little bit better, but I'm gonna add 25 more, so 225. So these might be different for me and for you, right? You have to find your own values and you can just find your values by testing. You change the value, play your game again, see if they're colliding, if they need more spacing or not. So I think 25 should be fine. Let's see here. Yeah, they are now walking in the same line as each other, but my enemy unit, uh, my unit is still not walking that far after crossing the bridge. So I'm gonna go inside my unit class and in the loop tab, I will also change this 150 to 200, what was it? 225. It should be the same name, the same number for both. So now I have all my units colliding each other. They will always be colliding each other if they go through the same path, to the same way. Right, that's nice. So my units are getting destroyed, but we cannot see their lives yet. And what we're gonna do next class is we're gonna display the life bar under each unit as we've done with the castles, right? So press save on your game, make sure you save your game, right? And I will see you in the next class. Bye.